to another episode of Sports and Songs Podcast. We're on season four, episode number 21. Andy, today's a songs episode only. So what we'll do is review an album, talk about music, concerts, upcoming tours, and keep it music focused. Today's yeah. April, April 6th. It's Easter weekend, Andy. The, the Passover season is here, yes. We are here. It's Monday, Thursday. Uh, we picked an album. In fact, a group, Andy, to do an album review that we've never touched on before. Today, we're going to focus on ZZ Top. What are your thoughts there? I'm working on my Texas goatee here since COVID, so I'm getting there. For about nine more years, I should be eligible. Yeah, do we know how long it took those guys to grow their uh, grow those out? I don't know. I, I didn't get that far. I saw some earlier pictures where there was like there was only like this big. And it was like looking at a guy with a shaved face. It's like, oh, they look like little babies with their little beards. You know? Well, We'll bring up a little of that on today's episode because they touch on that. And I'm not a big, big ZZ Top guy. I've always liked their music, but I, I, I don't have a single record of theirs. <gasps> do you? Do you have multiple? Yes. You do. Okay. I got my, uh, like a lot of the shirts, I got my brother's hand-me-downs, you know, so. Oh, well, here we go. It's, we're going to do a little Eliminator today, Andy. Classic album. Coolest album cover, I think, from my youth. Well, we, we like to, you know, talk about the album covers. I'm going to hide this agenda here and and, uh, and put this up there. But here it is. ZZ Top Eliminator. This is the album cover, one of the best of all times. And, of course, they feature the car. We'll get into that later. But Eliminator is the eighth studio album by American rock band ZZ Top, released 1983 by Warner Brothers Records. It rose high on the charts in many countries with four hit singles that were released. Um, Give Me All Your Lovin', which reached the American Top 40, Sharp Dressed Man, TV Dinners, and the most successful single, Legs. This album was certified diamond in the United States with 11 million sales in the U.S. alone. Uh, This was their most successful release. Uh, So... Andy, you know, ZZ Top was was popular. They put together a bunch of platinum platinum records, but boy, eleven million in the U.S. alone. Uh, this is this was huge, and of course, the timing was just right. Once again, early '80s rock was uh, was was big time. M- MTV was huge. Yep, and um, I'll get to it later. But they at at first they were kind of ZZ Top wasn't big into the MTV music videos and, and nope. they got some strong urging to say you know what now is the time to throw these out there these four singles throw them all on mtv make music videos for all of them we'll give you the budget just you got to have a music video and this is 1983 and so that also propelled them you know their their previous album was el loco in 1981 and uh, they use a series of music videos served as successful promotional tools of all similarly themed logos with the Gimme All Your Love and Sharp Dressed Man and Legs all got regular rotation on MTV and helped the band gain popularity, popularity with a younger base. You know, they had done a, uh, a demographic of their audience and they found out in 80, 81, 82 that uh, many young people perceive ZZ Top as, quote, an old fogey band is what the, the market research said. It was an old fogey band. So they said, what can we do to get younger audience? So one of was these music videos. They also had featured their 1933 Ford Coupe depicted on the album cover. That also could be seen in three of the four videos. Yep. And then they went on uh, the Eliminator uh, after release. ZZ Top embarked on a worldwide concert tour. Now the video for Legs earned the band M. TV Music Video Award for Best Group. Rolling Stone said this album, Eliminator, of the 500 greatest albums of all time, and that's not, you know, that's not rock, that's not heavy metal, that's not, you know, hard rock, that's just 500 greatest albums of all time. Put this at number 398. It was also listed as number 39 in the 100 greatest albums of the 80s. Now, that I agree with. Yep. That, yeah, it'd be top 40. I'd give them that. Top yeah. 40 in the top top 100 in the to, the whole decade of the 80s. And also, it also takes part in the book 1001 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. It was included in that. This is very good, Andy. It's a 45-minute album. 
it is considered hard rock, blues rock, new wave, and synth, synthetic rock or synthesizer rock. No new wave, no. No, no, I, yeah, I don't agree with that. So they released, so here, let me go through the, the release here, Andy. Um, and then we'll go through some of the, uh, the players here in the group. So Give Me All Your Lovin' is the first song. Very good. Got Me Under Pressure. Mm -hmm. Very good. Both songs, uh, incidentally enough, are three minutes and 59 seconds exactly each. Then Sharp Dressed Man, the song for uh, I Need You Tonight. Song five is a, is a fun song uh, written by Mr. Dusty Hill. Um, I Got the Six. And, of course, the uh, offset there is uh, You Got the Nine. This is the song that includes introduces the lyric Spank My Monkey, Andy. Yes. Very, very, as a 13-year-old, that was very in, uh, inspirational to me. Inspirational. I didn't know that until just doing the research. That's where that phrase came from here, an old ZZ Top 83 album, um, that phrase. Now, uh, side two on the thing here is on the cassette is Legs. Everyone knows that song. song. The next song is Thug. Next song is TV Dinners. Now, they did a video for that, but that was in Claymation. Yes. Claymation. Um, so they... Uh, they had that. Then the song "Dirty Dog," another good song. If I could flag, if I could only flag her down, and finishing off with the song "Bad Girl." Now the personnel: Billy Gibbons basically does all the vocals yep. here, except for one song. He's guitar and vocals. Dusty Hill is bass and vocals, and Frank Beard wow. on drums. Now. If you have the original album for this, Andy, which you did, you got the hand me down, right? You yeah. got the hand me down. The album credits just list these three as yeah. playing certain instruments. Um, there's no mention of synthesizers at all. Now, they, they bring in some synth sound uh, synth synthesizers here. Now, the other thing here is what I did not know is, is after 1977, ZZ Top went on hiatus after. Uh, after being weary of some constant touring, band leader and guitarist Billy Gibbons traveled around Europe. Bassist Dusty Hill vacationed in Mexico. Both of them grew out their beards longer. So was this when they did it? Is this That's when, when it happened? Yep. This is when it happened. Okay. They're both on hiatus. Do you know if that was planned or is that something they just did? I, I don't know if it just was dumb luck they both did it or if they both said, hey, let's see. I'm not sure the whole story on that. You know, I, I just found that out. So maybe if uh, someone could leave a comment there with, uh, yeah. with how that played, because those guys, both the band went on hiatus. They, those two traveled and drummer Frank Beard checked himself into the Palmer drug abuse program outside of Houston uh, to kick his addiction to hard na narcotics. And so they all went their own separate ways, did their thing. And, you know, Beard, after getting clean in 1979, bought a large house on the out outskirts of Houston in Quail Valley overlooking a golf course. And so he was able to get clean, play a lot of golf, as to shift, shift his addictions into something more uh, healthy, playing a lot of golf, being outside, getting fresh air. And they put a studio there in his uh, house as well. So they got into some, some of the new synthesizer things with the beats, faster beats, quicker music, and... And what they did is really attract a lot of young high school, junior high boys to be fans. But they also picked up girls, girls, high school girls became big fans of ZZ Top. It's the beard, baby. It was. And remember, they got done getting the, the marketing research that showing that the uh, most people thought that they were an old fogey band. And so whatever they did here, the trick worked because they had a new influx of, of audience, of people buying their albums, including high school girls, high school boys. Now, the album name Eliminator uh, was, is named after a drag racing term. Uh, after mentioning, you know, they got the, the car. They, they wanted to have the, the car on the front. They wanted to feature it. The early suggestion for the album title was Top Fuel. They wanted to make the album cover and title the album Top Fuel. They said, you know what? Let's go to Eliminator. That's a term for any category of race cars competing against each other. And they said that would be better, kind of more inclusive, broader term for drag racing. Yeah, Top Fueled song too, too hard rock at that time. Okay. In my opinion, you'd expect a hard, more of a hard rock album with a name like Top Fuel in, in this reporter's opinion. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, 
the other thing is is when they when they released this, they said it was just those three playing the instruments. They didn't mention the synthesizers. The they lost some of their hardcore bass fans by saying, you know, this is this is too much synth, too much synthesizers. I don't like all this. Uh, they lost some fans, you know, actually going to that. But yeah, I think, they, I think about adding the keyboard is where they got the new wave title, but they're not. Okay, so they uh, they got back. Uh, this tour really put them into larger than life scale back then. Um, as they played in uh, the British Isles, they played Dublin, then they played Castle Donington at the Monsters of Rock, and this was this was big. This was a big um, album. It's the first one that they had that became a worldwide success, and now they were bona fide pop stars, according to the Financial Times. Sold more than eleven million copies. 10 times more than any previous ZZ Top album at all. Uh, let's see. It, yeah, it, it says here they're attracting new, many new, new listeners, including teenage girls for the first time and many teenage boys. So they, you know, in 2008, they did a collector's album. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of that. Uh, we've talked about that before. They, yeah. they produced a bunch of live songs. And Lyndon Hudson, the former uh, DJ in the Houston area, they talked to him a lot as, as far as what are people listening to, what should be on this next album. And, and Lyndon Hudson, um, who did a lot of work with the synthesizers on the production and the arrangement, uh, really put a lot of time, blood, sweat, and tears into this album. Didn't get credited at first for doing a lot. Of them. Ended up later getting ostracized a little bit by the fan base and the band. But he's the one that really brought this up and says, you need more synthesizers. You need to bring up the beats per minute into that 120, 125 range is what he saw that was very popular when he did his own research by saying, here's what the popular songs are. The beats per minute have got to be in the 120 to 125 range. You need to step it up. It needs to be faster and quicker. And then, of course, um, the uh, the original, the hardcore fans, when the album came out, said, Who, who's playing... No one's playing the drums that fast. Who could be playing guitar uh, riffs this fast uh, with the beats going this fast? And so they overlaid those to get a, a better balance, a full sounding music. But I think the true fans right away said, you know, this isn't this isn't um, um, Frank Beard on the drums. This is not him keeping this pace. He's just filling in and there's a synthesizer behind this. Uh, what's your take on that, Andy? You know, it, it's true, but, you know, I think the, the old school ZZ Top fans, that's why those are the three guys on there. Dusty, Billy, and Frank. That's ZZ Top. Yep. Say what you will about other bands. Um, other other three-piece bands or four-piece bands. There's that fifth guy. Five-piece bands, there's that sixth guy. I mean, you look at Van Halen with, with 1984 and with 5150. Yep. You listen to it. Yes, when they recorded it, Eddie did keyboard and guitar. You listen to it, there's keyboard and guitar at the same time. Eddie Van Halen, awesome musician. There's no way on God's green earth you could play both at the same time. You needed that other body in there. Now, with that said, though, are you really part of the band? Um, yes, you should get credit on the songs. But you say ZZ Top. It's Dusty, Billy, Frank. Boom. That's ZZ Top. Yeah. Uh, that's just... Cinderella had a keyboard player for a while. Uh, he passed a couple years ago. We talked about it. But he was in a couple of the videos even. But when you think of Cinderella, you don't think of the keyboard player. Correct. Now, as uh, it says here, uh, this is the piece that I forgot. Uh, on Beard's drumming, a lot of it was replaced by drum machine or the electronic drums. Um keeping Beard's acoustic tom-tom -tom drum fills and cymbal accents. So he was able to mainly do the the tom-tom -tom drums and the cymbal accents uh, for, for it, but the rest of it is uh, machine or electronic. So yep. when they go to tour then, they've got to bring in some uh, electronics in the background to help fill in that other sound because yep. how can they do that live? Now, I think to the end user, I, I've never gone to a ZZ Top concert as Neither far as I know. picking up the sound, if I can notice that. I believe they're just a fun environment for to be at a ZZ Top concert regardless. You're not going to be going through and... And, um, you know, identifying this, uh, the real sound doesn't sound as full as it should be. And is there things in the background playing? More than likely there was, there had to have been. But I don't think that took away from the experience of being there. But the concerts for ZZ Top, 
they didn't exactly put on a big stage show. It was two guitars yeah. up front playing guitars or guitar bass and Frank on the drums. You were going to watch some awesome musicians. You weren't going to watch a stage show. So they don't care. People who went to go see one concert, the true fans, didn't care if they saw the keyboardist or the synthesizer player or nothing. They want to see those three. The other thing it says here in the notes, uh, and I'm pulling this from uh, just, just the Wikipedia, was they wanted to try in those music videos, the three of the four music videos that came out with this, uh, showing the car, the outdoor. Uh, they tried to depict America as a land of rock and roll, cars, and girls, uh, with three female models driving the Eliminator car during mm -hmm. these videos. Um, yes, Lord. They also had these the spinning guitars covered with white white sheepskin. Yep. Um, and so they had a, you know a lot of models. You know the guys, the young boys, the junior high boys. Uh, you know love the the models depicted here in these videos, but they really had a very uniform, consistent standard theme with all the music videos. They weren't jumping around the board. They all yep kind of like you know I think David Lee, uh, you know Van Halen when they were yep in their prime they had very consistent. Theme. But that's what I've got, Andy. And, that's what I've got. And that's where the girls like ZZ Top 2 is because the girls in the video were kind of that early 20s high school age, so those high school girls could relate to them. It wasn't the, the older girl type of thing. It's like, oh, boys, we're going to go that. We can't care. And also sharp-dressed man. Well, the girls like the sharp-dressed man, so that's where they got into that. That song very popular in movies and TV shows when you see someone getting dressed up in their tuxedo. Sharp Dress Man is playing in the background. Now, what is your – do you have a favorite song on the album? Um, you know, Sharp Dress Man is my favorite and for, for, for two reasons. A, I like that song, and also when he was in Texas wrestling, Jimmy Garvin, gorgeous Jimmy Garvin came up with that song. So that, that's where I, I – I knew that song from wrestling first before I knew it from this album. And I like Got Me Under Pressure is my yep, favorite. that's a good one too. And that was never released as a single, but it also received radio airplay and peaked at number 18 in May of 1983. That you is... You uh, that in some movies from the 80s, too, sometimes. Oh, yes. In fact, I listened to that today uh, here before the show, but love that song. Um, and all these are good. These are all good songs. You can play the album front to back. Sadly, TV Dinners isn't that bad a song, either. I didn't like that at first. I, I, kind of, I think it was, kind of was goofy. That's why I liked it. It has to grow on you. Um, yeah. But all the songs here are are good. Do you have any? Uh, I brought up your screen here if yeah. you want to share anything else. Yes, I do have some stuff. Here's just you always see the ZZ Top logo. Here's one kind of a jean jacket, leather jacket type patch logo. I thought was kind of cool. But this month is International Guitar Player Month, so we are going to focus on the guitar players this okay. month in the bands. So the, the month of going. month of April is Guitar Player Month. Okay, and International Guitar Player Month, by the way. I like it. So here we go. Well, first of all, there's the boys. Dusty Hill, Billy Gibbons, CZ Top. Yes. We'll start with the late Dusty Hill. Joe Michael Hill passed away July of 21. He was 72 years old. Bassist. Now, here's the thing. You talked about how they took a break in the 70s and that. He was the bassist for over 50 years with ZZ Top. Jeez. Because they, the century. they were just a small Texas band for the longest time. So, you know, they're not like the Stones or these other bands, been for, they, they've been around forever, you know, 50 years with ZZ Top. Uh, and per his wishes after he passed away, he was replaced by the band's longtime guitar tech, Elwood Francis. So okay. the first part. Uh, growing up, he was big into the blues music, which was very uncommon in Texas for a Texas white boy back in the day. Yeah. I like the blues. He'd bring records over to his friends' houses. And he'd bring like Muddy Waters and and Sun House. Uh, Sun House is a slide guitar player for the blues. He'd bring that stuff over. So he really loved the blues coming up. And you could hear that in their music, both of them. Sure. Um, and uh, kind of, we don't like to drag religion in, but it being Passover, I thought I'd mention this, this quote from uh, Dusty Hill. Dusty said that he believed in God, but he didn't know what or who God actually is. And he declined to admit if he were, was Republican or Democrat. He'd say, he'd tell him, I'm just a Texan left to my own devices. <laughs> and with that, you hear that though, you know, that, you know, it was tongue in cheek. But like you said, their concerts, their personality was just 
here I am. We're just going to play music, leave us alone. And yep. that's what was really cool about him. Um, December 16th, 1984, Dusty accidentally shot himself in the abdomen when his derringer fell from his boot and discharged. He drove himself to hospital before going into shock. And he did, of course, make a full recovery. So, you know, just a Texas boy left to his own devices. Um, yeah. He did passive natural causes. Like I said, in 21 there, great bass player. Um, just you hear a lot of blues. And so, like I said, him being a blues fan as a kid growing up, you hear that in their stuff. Uh, Billy Gibbons, also referred to sometimes as the Reverend, because we're getting another religion quote in here. Um, he once did an interview with a classic rock magazine where he pretended to be a reverend on the radio when he was younger. And since he pulled it off, a lot of the guys in the business kidded him and called him reverend all the time. Sure. Um, he also, back in 2018, and now here, if you like the blues like I do, or you just the southern rock type sound. In 2018, he recorded a song, The Holy Grail, with John Fogarty. Now, if you like good blues, good simple guitar playing. Okay. I'm going to have to write that. Is that going to be my homework assignment? Um, I'm going to listen to that. Yeah, coming up, that's that's part of your homework, yes. Okay. Um, but now we got some new releases coming up. L.A. Guns, Black Diamond comes out. Black Diamond comes out April 14th. This is the Tracy Guns, L.A. Guns. The same ones where if you're in the metro area here, you get your tickets with them and Tom Kiefer coming up at Medina. Okay, so it's Black Diamond, okay? Black Diamonds, yes. L.A. Guns. That is kind of a cool album cover there, too. Paul Gilbert, the Dio album. Um, it's all instrumental, 12-track instrumental of Dio songs from Rainbow, uh, Sabbath, Dio solo stuff. Paul Gilbert, if you don't recognize him, he's the guitarist from Mr. Big and Racer X. So this is an instrumental? Instrumental to all the Dio songs and the... I have not heard it yet, but from the reviews I've heard, awesome. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I know yeah. you're kind of a Dio guy, so that's kind of more. That's going to pique my interest, and that'd be a good right. one also to do on an album review to actually yeah. do a, like a review on that. Uh, yeah. That would be very interesting. Concerts coming up. Okay. We kind of stick with the blues themes here a little bit. Eric Clapton, September 14th at the X with Jimmy Vaughn. Some of you are sitting there going, who the hell is Jimmy Vaughn? Who, uh, I, I am myself. Who is Jimmy Vaughn? Well, you've heard of a guy named Stevie Ray Vaughn? Yes, yes. His brother. Uh, Jimmy Vaughn was in um, the band that did that song, Tough Enough. Okay. Uh, Tough yeah. Enough. Okay. Yep. Uh, Jimmy Vaughn, he's a good, very underrated blues guitarist because you're Stevie Ray's brother. So, you know, it's like sure. Ozzy Canseco, you know, Jose's brother. Yeah. Exactly. You know, Ozzy had a decent career with your Jose Cotego's brother. It's your rap. Now, that leads me to the homework assignment. Songs oh, here we go. Here we go. Jimmy Vaughn, look him up, listen to him. Um, I'm pretty sure, I have not heard this, but I'd bet the farm and all the animals at that concert with Eric Clapton and Jimmy Vaughn, there will be some Jeff Beck tribute songs played. Bet the farm and the animals on that one. Take, yes. take it to the, Jeff take it to the bank, as they say. Your Fox Sports bet would say, take it to the bank. So was that, it was the Fabulous Thunderbirds. Fabulous Thunderbirds, that was their name, yes. Tough enough, okay. He was in that one. Um, so he's done a lot of good stuff. He's you know a little more than a studio musician, but he's always been that other guy. Okay. Um, so he's very, very talented. But, just one more thing. You can ruin your day and make you feel old, Dan. Okay. Here's a list of albums that turned 50 this year. Ouch. Now, I'm not going to go through all of them, just some ones that we think, hey, that's a cool album. I remember listening to that. These albums turned 50. Aerosmith's Aerosmith album. Sure. Uh, Alice Cooper, Billion Dollar Baby. Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, ELO's ELO2 is on there. Uh, Led Zeppelin's House of the Holy. Eagles wow. Desperado. Um, let's just let's go through it. Joe Walsh, The Player You Get. Queen's Queen album was on there. Grand Funk Railroad, we're an American band. ZZ Top, Trace Hombres is on this list. The Allman Brothers, Brothers and Sisters. Um, Leonard Skinner's Leonard Skinner. 
album. The Rolling Stones, Goat's Head Soup. Um, this guy going through some of these. Uh, Jethro Tull. Jethro Tull, yes. Billy Joel's Piano Man, The Kinks are on there. Another Alice Cooper, Muscle of Love. I don't get that. <laughs> I don't understand that one. Um, Paul McCartney and Wings, Band on the Run. So there's just some, and uh, if you're just listening to this on Spotify, go ahead and watch this on YouTube, zip to the end and just see this list. Um, albums turning 50 this year, and of course I just did some of them. Some of these we've talked about on the show, I mean, you know, and here it's, so it's a 50-year-old album now, you know, so. 50 that, years old. That, sir, there we go. Steely Dan, Queen, yeah, that's. Uh, Jethro Tull. Alice yeah. Cooper, Pink Floyd. Jackson Brown, to every man. Deep Purple. Right. So those are albums turning 50 here yeah. this year in 2023. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's uh that does make us feel old. That kind of ruins your day a little bit there. But that's good stuff. So this is kind of a top, depressing time of year anyway, you know. ZZ, ZZ top, good stuff fun you know that they're, they're having a good time this is all good easy listening music and again i, I mentioned that was this before and this one falls in the category of the whole great album have in the background as you're sitting by the fire having some drinks with, with friends it's good background music too you know going on a long drive press play and it's good uh -huh. to go just let her let her rip yep if you got a awesome flight down to kentucky right, so on the airline you know what i might uh so it's International Guitar Month. So, um, all right, yeah. we'll we'll keep that in mind as we come up with new albums of the week to review for the uh, for the rest of April here. All right, everyone, have a yeah, good time. And most bands that we cover have great hosts anyway. So true, true. I will see you next week. Have a good week, everyone. See ya. Bye.